Let's now see solved problem number 4 in subnetting. Let's see the outcomes of today's session. Upon the completion of this session, the learner will be able to. Outcome number 1, we will subnet the given network based on host requirements. Outcome number 2, we will find the number of networks or subnets. And outcome number 3, we will find the number of hosts per subnetwork or network. And we are going to solve this subnetting problem based on the 5 step approach which I had projected in the previous lectures. I request you to pause this video for a while and note all the 5 steps if needed. Let's dive into the question now. The question is, subnet the IP address 10.0.0.0 into 100 hosts in each subnet. So we are given with a class A IP address and we are required to subnet the given IP address into 100 hosts in each subnet. Let's solve the problem with the same 5 step approach. Let's start with step number 1. Let's identify the class of the IP address and note the default subnet mask. In the question, it is mentioned as 10.0.0.0. So, step number 1 is, it is a class A IP address and the default subnet mask is 255.0.0.0. Step number 1 is over. Let's now move on to step number 2, wherein we are going to convert the default subnet mask into binary. We know the default subnet mask is 255.0.0.0. If we convert that into binary, we will get this as the result. Only in the first octet we will get all ones and we don't find any ones in the other octet. Step number 2 is also over. Let's now move on to step number 3 wherein we are going to note the number of hosts required per subnet which is mentioned in the question and find the subnet generator and the octet position. Let's now see how many hosts are required per subnet. It's 100 hosts, right? In order to find the subnet generator and the octet position, we are required to convert this 100 into binary. So, when we convert that into binary, we are getting 1100100. 64 plus 32, it's 96. 96 plus 4 is 100. So, we are getting this number and we can't get a binary representation of the decimal number 100 without 7 bits. So, 7 bits are ultimately required. In order to find the subnet generator, we need to reserve 7 zeros from the right to left approach, right? So, let's take the subnet mask. Let's reserve the space for 4 octets. And let's reserve 7 zeros in the subnet mask from the right. So when we reserve 7 zeros, we'll be getting 7 zeros in the 4th octet. And still we have 1 bit left in the 4th octet. And obviously we are going to fill in all 1's in the remaining place. So when we fill all 1's in the remaining places, we get the new subnet mask. And what is this subnet generator? The first one we are encountering from right to left is here. Right? So this is the first one we are encountering. And what is the decimal place of this one? 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. So the first one we are encountering when we move from right to left is this. So the place of this is 128. So the subnet generator is 128. And in which octet the subnet generator is present? It is not present in octet 1, 2 or 3. It is present in octet position 4. So the octet position is 4. Now step number 3 is also over. And now let's move on to step number 4, which is generating the new subnet mask. We have already generated the new subnet mask. In all bits are 1, it's 255.255.255. Here it is only 128. So the new subnet mask is 255.255.255.128. In slash notation, it's 8 plus 8 plus 8, 24 plus 1, 25 ones are there in the subnet mask. So in slash notation, it's slash 25. We are done with step number 4 also. We are now in step number 5. In step number 5, we are going to use the subnet generator what we have found in step number 3. And we are going to generate the network ranges, which is often called as subnets. And these subnets will be reflected in the appropriate octet position. Let's see that now. We are going to generate the network ranges. And what is the IP address which is given in the question? It is 10.0.0.0, right? So the first IP address of the first subnet is 10.0.0.0. Now we are going to add the subnet generator in the octet position 4 so that we will get the second subnet. So to generate the second subnet, we are going to add 128 to the fourth octet. So we'll be getting 10.0.0.128. To generate the third subnet, we are going to add 128 to this. When we add 128 to this, we will be getting 256. But 256 is not a valid entry in an IP address, right? Any octet value cannot be 256 because it should be between 0 and 255. So when it is 256, this place becomes 0 and the previous place that is the third octet becomes 1. 
So when we add 256, the third subnet will be 10.0.1.0. Then add 128 to the fourth octet will be getting 10.0.1.128. Then add 128 to this fourth octet will be getting 10.0.1.256 where 256 is not a valid entry. So make a 0 in the fourth octet and add 1 to the third octet. So we'll be getting 10.0.2.0 and so on. And we have found out the starting address of each subnet and what about the ending address? The ending address of the first subnet will be 10.0.0.127. Why? The next subnet starts with 128, so the previous subnet will be with 127. Similarly, the ending address of the second subnet will be 10.0.0.255 because the next address is 10.0.1.0. Please note it's somewhat different here. We need to manually work it out or you can convert this into binary and you can add it. No problem. So the last IP address of the second subnet is 10.0.0.255. When you add 1, it will be the next subnet, right? When we add 1 to this, we will get the next subnet. The broadcast address of the third subnet or the last address of the third subnet is 10.0.1.127 because the fourth subnet starts with 10.0.1.128 and so on. So we are done with the generation of subnet ranges. And how many networks are possible? We are clear that in each subnet there are 128 IP addresses. So from 0 to 127 or from 128 to 255 or if you take any other subnet. In this example, we can have 128 IP addresses but 126 IP addresses are usable. 126 hosts are possible because we cannot assign the first address to the host as well as the last address to the host. The first address represents the network address. And the last address represents the broadcast address. How many networks are possible? How many hosts are possible? We will calculate that now. Formally, we need to solve this, right? So in this example, the first octet remains unchanged, right? So the first octet remains unchanged. So we are not cared about the first octet. Then the bit modifications is done only in the remaining three octets. Only these three octets are getting changed, right? So how many bits are there? A total of 32 bits are there in an IP address or in a subnet mask. In this subnet mask, out of these 32 bits, the first 8 bits remains unchanged. So we have changes only in the 24 bits, the next 24 bits, that is in the octet number 2, 3 and 4. So out of these 24 bits, how many 1s are there? So 2 power the number of 1 says that many networks are possible. 2 power the number of 0 says that many IP addresses are possible, right? So the answer for this is 2 power 7. How many zeros are there? 7 zeros are there. So 2 power 7 is equal to 128. That is the subnet generator, right? So 2 power 7 which is equal to 128 hosts per network is possible. Please note 128 hosts means 128 IP addresses. But not 128 hosts are really possible. We need to subtract 2 from this. So a total of 126 hosts can be possible. But 128 IP addresses are available. But still 126 IP addresses are usable. And how many networks are possible? Out of this 24, 7 zeros are there and we have 17 ones, right? So 2 power 17 is equal to 1,31,072 networks or subnets are possible. Please note 2 power 7 number of IP addresses and 2 power 17 networks. And usable hosts, 2 power 7 minus 2 which is 126 hosts. And that's it guys, we have solved this problem. And here is the homework problem for you. Try on your own. Three homework problems I have given. Break 201.1.1.0 into networks of 40 hosts each. Question number two. Break 172.15.0.0 into networks of 1000 hosts each. And question number three is. Break or subnet 15.0.0.0 into networks of 100 hosts each. Please take your time. Solve this problem in the same five step approach. And then post your answers in the comment section. I hope now you know how to submit the given network based on the host requirement. And we know how to find the number of networks or subnet. And we also know how to find the number of hosts per subnet. So far we have solved four problems. And we have covered problems in class A, B and C as well. I hope you guys enjoyed the lecture and thank you for watching.